what our data shows is beta hydroxybutyrate. So this is the major ketone body. There are there are three. There are two others: acetoacetate and acetone. But the major one, which is present in millimolar concentrations in your blood uh, when you fast, has is not only uh, has two different properties. One, it is a nutrient. That is, it's a form of energy. Think mm -hmm. about it, uh, something in between a carbohydrate and, and a lipid. But it also has signaling properties. And this is what I alluded to. So the signaling properties of, of, of metabolites, it's clearly in the case of by inhibiting the HDAC, it modifies the epigenetic landscape. And so there are multiple ways in which you can uh, enter a state of ketosis. One way is to fast. Uh, so if you, you know, go on a water-only diet, within 16 to 18 hours, you will see ketone bodies appearing in the blood. You can recognize this in someone's breath. The, the breath becomes fruity because of the acetone that you ex excrete uh, as a gas. But so obviously, you know, if you go on a prolonged fast and you go, you know, people have shown, you know, on a 10-day fast, you can have beta hydroxybutyrate level go up to 10, 15 millimolar, extremely high. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's not something that you want to do every day. So people have looked for alternative manners in which to induce ketosis. And there is a way to do this without fasting, which is simply by a carbohydrate restriction. And so if you cut down your, your carbohydrate by less than to less than about 15 grams per day, which would be the equivalent of an apple a day, over time you will enter ketosis. Now there's a third way. And so, you know, we have all kinds of ketogenic diets that are available. The, the one that many of you are probably are familiar with was, was the Atkins diet, which started in the 70s and got a, a bad name and a bad reputation because it was argued that people should stop eating carbohydrate and replace this by greasy meat, essentially, which are, <laughs> I'm not sure is totally healthy. But there are, there are other ways to enter ketosis and and to conduct a ketogenic diet without eating highly saturated fat. And, and there are lots of books and advice on this. And I, I think I, I go periodically on this type of diet and I find it is, it is a diet that feels extremely healthy in terms of, in terms of brain uh, function. Now, the third way to go to uh, into ketosis is by eating or absorbing directly beta hydroxybutyrate itself. And, there are a number of products that you can buy right now, beta hydroxybutyrate salt. There are all kinds of problems with those. One is beta hydroxybutyrate is a very short-lived metabolite. So if you eat, you know, if you eat it at T0 within an hour, an hour, an hour and a half, it will be gone. The second is it has to be absorbed as a salt, and and which means that either you know people have an excess of magnesium, so you can see or citrate or sodium, and so that this brings a number of problems. So if you've seen uh, hydroxybutyrate salts on, on Amazon, uh, I would argue that this is probably not a very healthy way to, uh, to enter ketosis. And so to address this, we, we've generated a novel ketone body esters that actually are commercially available now. I don't, don't know if it's appropriate for me to plug in a product that, I've, <laughs> that I have developed, but there's a product on, online called Metabolic Switch. This is a product that we, this is a molecule that I designed a number of years ago, actually five years ago. And what it is, it is a hybrid, an ester between beta hydroxybutyrate and a fatty acid. And so what this does is allows you to eliminate the salt problem this, this ester is absorbed and it gets slowly hydrolyzed, which releases beta hydroxybutyrate, which raises your ketosis immediately. So if you take the, the recommended dose within 30 minutes, you will be at about one millimolar uh, ketosis. And on the other hand, the short fatty acid that we have linked goes to the liver where it can be used to, to generate de novo beta hydroxybutyrate. So you have a little bit of a, a delayed effect and when you take a dose of this beta hydroxybutyrate ester, you actually, you will enter ketosis and you will remain there for four to six hours. And so, the, you know, we, we've seen, you know, the, I mean, we have documented the product is sold. It actually does work. And it's an interesting experiment, experiment to conduct if you've never felt what ketosis is. If you have fasted for three days, people describe that after three days, you have a clarity 
first you, you lose your hunger and you have this uh, feeling of, of deep clarity. And this is recapitulated simply by absorbing the ester. So we're quite excited by the product. There is a significant barrier to this product, which is its taste, which is horrible. And I found personally that uh, if, you, if, you, if you like kombucha, a, a glass of ginger kombucha right after it erases the taste. So it actually allows one to deal with, with this issue. You don't need to adjust your diet. And that, that's the, the beauty of it. So you can be in a ketosis and eat anything you want. Yeah. And, and you know, frankly, one of the things that one of the, the, the effects that we've seen, this is still early. The product went, went on the market about six months ago is a loss of appetite. So mm. we've, I'm not sure that this is something I would recommend to someone who is, you know, fully healthy and exercising and, and doing everything they do. But we've seen a um, really dramatic effect in obesity. So people losing weight and frankly, the ketogenic diet has been used as a, as a very efficient tool for people to lose weight. And we've never really understood why it was working so well. And this is one of the reasons for the popularity of the diet today. But we, I, I've experienced it myself. If I take a metabolic switch, my appetite goes away completely. It's actually very strange. And so we'll see. We'll see. You know, the one thing that I should say also I was hesitant at first to sell this as a supplement because I, I really, you know, as a physician, I, I believe in, you know, in, in evidence-based type of product, but we are currently, we will be conducting clinical trials for specific indications because we think, well, you know, there might be a group of patients, for example, obese individuals or someone with type 2 diabetes who might be interested in taking this chronically today, even without a clinical trial. I want to demonstrate the efficacy. And so we're looking at a number of potential indications where these compounds could be tested using the, you know, the standard tools of a, of a clinical trial to determine whether they actually are efficacious. Uh, simply based on anecdotal evidence, we know they're safe. They, we went through a, an approval process with, with the government for so-called grass approval. So we know the products are safe. Now we want to demonstrate their efficacy, and I think these, these studies uh, are ongoing. I think in the case of these esters, we've, uh, we have tested them in a, in a number of models for Alzheimer's disease in mice, and we have a paper that is uh, in preparation with John Newman, I should say. A lot of, lot of the work on the ketone body has been done with another collaboration between John Newman's lab here at the Buck and, and my laboratory.